Hey, what's going on folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. Today I'm going to be replacing both CV axles on this 05 Honda Odyssey behind me. And uh, if you're interested in, in knowing why I'm replacing these CV axles, uh, I actually had a, a vibration at about 60 to 70 miles per hour going down the interstate. And I did some diagnostic work and if you're interested in watching that video, I have a video on that. It's in the link or in the description below. There's a link there. Uh, you're feel free to watch that video and hopefully that will help you. So if you're having a similar situation or a similar symptom, uh, then I, I would highly recommend watching that video there. Uh, but I, I had some play on the inner joint of my CV axles on both sides. And I believe what's going on is uh, whenever I, I accelerate, uh, it's causing that, uh, that slop inside that CV axle to, uh, causing the CV axle to move around inside that, uh, that joint there, causing a vibration. So uh, we're going to go ahead and replace these CV axles and uh, this is, I'm just going to work on the uh, right side of the vehicle and pretty much the left side is similar, just a little bit different and I'll, I'll show a couple of clips um, showing the differences between the right and left sides. So uh, this, this should help for both sides of your vehicle there. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Appreciate you guys watching. All right, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and get you some uh, nitro gloves, wear those, and put you some safety glasses on. Okay, guys, be sure to protect yourself. <clears throat> now, first thing we're going to do is remove our axle nut here. And our axle nut is a 36 millimeter. So you'll need an axle nut socket, uh, impact preferably. And I've got an impact, and I know that's cheating, and you probably, you may not have one. You don't have to have an impact to do this, but if you got a nice long breaker bar, uh, have somebody apply the brake for you while you put the breaker bar on the uh, the nut there and loosen it up. You can also, if you don't have a buddy to help you, you can uh, take your hub cap off or your center cap off of your rim, and with the tire on the ground and the vehicle in park, you can then loosen that nut up there too, and it'll keep the uh, the wheel from spinning on you. So we'll go ahead and take that nut off. And of course, for my up north uh, viewers, it probably wouldn't hurt to put a little penetrating oil on that before you take that nut off. Also, we're going to have to remove our outer tie rod end uh, nut and our lower control arm uh, nut. So spray those down with some penetrating oil too if you need to. Uh, a lot of salt on them roads cause a lot of rust. So let's go ahead and tap on our CV axle just a little bit. Try to get it moving. Next, let's go ahead and. Uh, get our nut off of our, or loose, on our outer tie rod end. First you gotta take your uh, cotter pin and get it out. Okay guys, I'm gonna break in right here. You're about to see me use a method to disconnect the outer tie rod end from the steering knuckle using a hammer. Not everybody can do this successfully without damaging the outer tie rod end. So I'm just gonna suggest that nobody use this method. So uh, if you look down in the description of this video, I'll have a link to two videos that will give you an alternative means of disconnecting the outer tie rod end from your steering knuckle. I would actually prefer you use those methods. Don't use the method you're about to see. Go ahead and loosen your nut on your outer tie rod end. It's a 19 millimeter. All right. Now, little secret for getting that uh, tie rod end off of your steering knuckle there. Put your nut back on just enough to where this part is flush with the nut. And take you a hammer and just beat it up like that. Just like so. Go ahead and take your nut back off. Right, actually, leave the nut in for right now. This is going to help us when we go to uh, take our lower control arm or uh, lower ball joint nut off. All right, on our lower ball joint nut there, it's got a uh, special little clip, little safety clip you got to take out there. Got to kind of stick your screwdriver down in there and pull it out like so. See how that works? Just like that. Just pull that off, set it to the side because you're going to reuse that. All right, and that's a uh, three quarter nut on that lower ball joint there. Let's go ahead and put that on. And uh, this is where leaving that outer tie rod end nut on is going to help out because it's going to kind of give you a little counter force there. When you're loosening that nut, the uh, whole thing won't just twist on you. Go ahead and take that up there. 
kind of leave that on just kind of loosely for right now. We'll go ahead and take that nut the rest of the way off on our outer tie rod end there. Set that off to the side in a safe spot where you won't lose it. There we go. And now our spindle can go back and forth freely, like so. Okay, now we're going to take a rather long pry bar, maybe about two, two and a half feet long. We're going to stick it down in that hole of the lower control arm there, and we're going to use this to pry down on the lower control arm while we beat on the lower ball joint where it goes into the steering, uh, steering knuckle. Okay, and the area in particular that we're going to beat on is right here behind the rotor on the uh, steering knuckle where the lower ball joint shaft goes through the steering knuckle. Be careful, don't hit your lower ball joint, don't bust your boot on your ball joint. Also, don't hit the heat sh or the uh, splash shield on the back of the rotor there. Don't hit your caliper, don't hit anything else but that area right there. And the reason we left that nut on the lower ball joint is because uh, we may accidentally miss. And if we do, that's okay, we'll just hit the nut. We won't mess up the, uh, the threads on the, uh, the shaft there. So this is what it will look like if you're doing it on your own. You got your pry bar through your hole in your lower control arm there. You're going to pry down on it while you beat that spot I told you about. And by the way, if you got a partner that can pry down on this for you while you're beating that spot, it will help out a whole lot because that way you can put both hands on the hammer and you can really get on that spot and uh, whoever's prying down on this can put a lot more weight on it. But you got to do what you got to do if you're just one person and you're you're all you got <laughs> well this is one way you can do it there we go got it loose go ahead and take our nut off the rest of the way there get off of there once that's out we can go ahead and take our little ball joint out all the way and now our steering knuckle moves around all right, now we're going to take the bottom of this rotor here. We're just going to take the bottom of this rotor here and pull out on it while we beat the shaft in. And by the way, if you don't trust your aim, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put your lug studs or lug nuts back on your lug nuts. That way you don't accidentally beat those. And don't hit this lip right here. You don't want to deform that because your rim uh, has to go back over this and you don't want to catch it on that lip. So be careful where you're hitting. About right there, I'd go ahead and take you a punch or something, stick it in the middle there, and then punch it the rest of the way out. I'm going to pull out the rest of the way. See the axle off the side there. I like to turn my steering knuckle and rotor out that way, and we have our CV axle exposed. All right, for this next part here, we'll just need a uh, like a foot long or foot and a half long pry bar and a ball peen hammer. All right, we're going to take a pry bar and we're going to fish it right in between the two exhaust pipes right here. You put it on the uh, back side of that CV axle. All right, there's the back side of the CV axle there. And we're just going to take and knock the CV axle out that way, out of the carrier. All right, now we can just grab it by the inner joint here and just pull straight out. And this here is what the CV axle goes up onto. And uh, you can see you got this little sir clip right here. And a lot of times technicians like to uh, replace these. Uh, I personally do. Uh, check your manual, see if this has to be replaced. But um, get you a new sir clip, put that on there. That way your new uh, CV axle will fit on there and it will stay securely. And on the other side, the uh, sir clip is actually built onto the, uh, or placed onto the end of the CV axle there. So that's what locks the CV axle into the uh, the transmission. And just for some added clarity, uh, when I put the pry bar on it, I hit uh, put the pry bar on it this way, and I was uh, hitting it on the back side of the pry bar, pushing it out of that shaft that has the circlip on it. So just for added clarity, hit it right there. Also, many technicians recommend replacing the output shaft seals. Uh, this one just goes into a carrier bearing right here. This is like a dust boot to keep the grease or the uh, dirt and stuff out. Um, on the other side, uh, the output shaft 
or the CV axle goes into the transmission and there's actually transmission fluid that may come out when you do that side. Um, you may want to replace that seal too, but you need special equipment to do that. And I don't really get into that with this video here. So uh, we're just going to replace the CV axles. The other CV axle comes out similarly to the other side, but uh, what you do on this one is you actually put a, a pry bar right in between the CV axle and the transmission case and you pry out on it. Let's take your pry bar. Stick it in there and pry outward, just like so. Alright, we're just going to take our new CV axle and put it right back on our shaft there. And make sure it's in securely. There, we go. there you go. Kind of bottomed out there. You kind of know when it's in. Whenever you go to pull on the inner shaft there, or the inner joint. And it doesn't want to pull out on you then you know you got it locked in also you can look at the underside of it make sure it's put all the way uh pushed all the way in make sure it goes in just as far as the other shaft did all right now we're just gonna pull our spindle out a little bit take our cv axle put it back in all right. push that thing back in there And our new CV axle should come with a new nut. Highly recommend putting a new nut on there. Put that on finger tight for right now. Then we're gonna take our pry bar and we're gonna place it right back into that same hole that we had it in earlier whenever we were prying down on the uh, whenever we were prying down on the lower control arm. pry down on it and we're going to reset our uh, ball joint back in the hole of the uh, spindle. Alright, move that down a little bit there, line up holes back up, and be careful. new castle nut. I recommend new fasteners. Go ahead and put it back on there. Finger tight for right now. Alright, take our outer tie rod end. Put it back in the uh, steering knuckle there. Take a new nut. Place it back on the uh, tie rod end. And just finger tight for right now. And now we're going to tighten up our lower ball joint nut the manufacturer's specification. I'm going to use a manual for that information. For the life of me, I don't know how you're going to get a torque wrench on this. you got to turn this far enough to where you can get that cotter pin back in there. <clears throat> you stick that back in there. We're good. Alright, let's go ahead and tighten down our outer tie rod end. Alright, let's go ahead and put our new cotter pin in. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and tighten up our axle nut here, and uh, you can do this in one of many ways. Um, this way in particular, I'm going to I'm going to do it. Uh, I've got a pry bar uh, put through my lug studs here, and that's going to prevent the uh, the axle from rotating while I tighten down the nut. And I've got the the bottom of it sitting on the floor there, so that should keep it stationary, so that I can get that thing tightened up. You can also put the tire back on lower the vehicle down and put the weight of the vehicle on the tire with the vehicle in park and then tighten it down without the hub cap on or center cap on you can try that way too but uh, this is the way I'm going to do it and you do want to torque this down to uh, manufacturer specification by the way you'll need your manual for that spec go ahead and tighten it down there we 
go. Now we got to stake our axle nut down. And you see you got this little channel right here on your axle shaft. We got to take this little lip of the nut and stake it down into that channel. And that'll keep it from coming off. It's, it's kind of the same purpose that a uh, cotter pin uh, serves there. So we're going to keep it from backing out on itself. And this is a screwdriver, not a chisel. Please use the chisel. This isn't the right way to use a screwdriver. You can uh, break the end there and it can shatter and come off and possibly hit you. So be careful. This would go a lot easier if I had the right tool. I forgot it, sorry. There we go, that's kind of ugly. So there you go guys. Uh, <clears throat> I know it kind of got dark, I had to put a tarp up. It's burning up, it's the 4th of July and it's probably close to 95 degrees out here, 100% humidity. And the sun was just coming right down on me, so I had to cover up a little bit there. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, you do need a repair manual for the specifics on this, like uh, torque specifications and whatnot. Also, you saw me use a, uh, a wrench on the outer tie rod in a nut. Uh, you're really supposed to use a torque wrench for that and torque it down to proper specification. But all in all, uh, you, you pretty much get the gist of the job here just by the, uh, the visuals and whatnot. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment below. And uh, please read the entire description before you do this project. And uh, always wear safety glasses and protect your skin. Wear nitrile gloves if you're not allergic to nitrile. I don't think anybody's allergic to nitrile. Anyway, thank you guys. Have a good day.